What's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the first time you're tuning in. Please make sure you don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you've done that before. Thumbs up. So today I'm going to be taking you the basics of After Effects so you can learn from beginners to become a master or whatever levels are you wish. So on the first you can see on this um, top left corner we have some um, the tools which you normally use. These are actually familiar. Those are actually um, using Photoshop actually uh, familiar to these tools. So I'm going to start on from this one here that looks like a house. It says a home. The home is just like um, the beginning button like it's you know if you use an iphone the home button on android it takes you back to the home page like the beginning process of everything that's what the home does like this is definitely what the home button does when you click it it takes you back to where your project and everything is actually saved but since i'm not i'm not um going back to this place i'm just gonna stop it from here i just want to use it and then on the next one um it's the selection two and the short code for this is v you can see selection tool and it says v every every tool here actually has a, a short code so yeah so the v is actually this one i'm using now which is the selection tool and then the next one is here is a hand tool which the shortcut is h and it actually helps you to drag like let me just show you if i should create a new um solid here so what this does is that it uh, literally helps you move you can see it's dragging the whole um object around to and fro and back and front so that's what it actually does so and then the next one here is actually um the zoom um key the zoom tool this is actually shortcut and the z is the shortcut so if i should zoom in now you can see it goes in 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 in, in. that's actually um tool that's what it does let me just zoom out fit to 100 so the next one here is the rotation tool it literally rotates anything um you add to the layer anything here it rotates it that's its function i think its shortcut should be um w okay that's its shortcut key and the next one is the um camera tool it, it actually um has a drop down menu. like if literally if you see this arrow here this arrow that looks under if you see this other one they don't have any arrow but this camera tool has an arrow so you can see it has on um unified camera orbit camera tool track xyz xy camera tool and z like literally has a lot so if you want to go through the shortcut you can literally be pressing c c and then it changes from the different camera modes and yeah so if i want to use that all i just have to i already have my solid here i just have to right click and then click create new and camera and then make sure it's on two node camera and then click on ok and then make this layer a 3d so you can actually rotate so if i should click now you can see it's rotating as 3d you can see that 3d layer is working you can see it yeah that's what the 3d camera um the 3d uh, this stuff to the camera to unify camera too so i'm sorry about the noise so the next is the anchor point tool the anchor point tool literally changes the position of the the middle position of the layer like literally let me say this is the middle you can see this is the middle if i should press um arrow on this stuff if i should rotate this stuff now you can see it's literally rotating from the middle you can see but now if i change the anchor point to go over to the layer press a and then let me change the anchor point to uh, sorry let me change it to the left or i think it, um right i'm taking the anchor point two to the right now you can see this anchor point two is actually going to the right the shortcut for this is by pressing a on your keyboard okay so now let me take this back to the to the way it was uh it's not actually accurate but now i want to rotate this now press arrow on your select layer and then press arrow if i should rotate this now you notice it's now rotating from the side but from the first time it was actually rotating from the middle but now it's rotating from the side that's what the anchor point do it changes the point of command that's what it literally does so let me take it back to the to where it was before um so you can see it. so literally it's here now so if i should rotate this now you can see it's rotating from the middle that's what it does the anchor point to change the points of command okay so the next one here is the shape um, rectangle tool also known as the, the shape tool and this short code is actually q if i should long press on this because it has a drop down you can see different different shape if i click rectangle now it can shape in and then you see a square shape because that was the shape i clicked if i can if i go back now i can literally hold on this and then uh you can see let me select this one that looks like a circle you can see the shape is actually forming and then let me go back to this one um start tool so if i should click this now it forms a star 
as you can see that's what the shape tool or the um ellipse tool do does and then this one here is the pen tool it literally has this pen tool and it's shortcut is g you can literally also change this by pressing g multiple times then it changes like um it's a pen tool like if i want to draw a max it literally has same functionality with the um start the shape tool but just that this the pen tool is more flexible to to write on to get an in shape let me say i just want to get a rectangular shape i want to curve i want to make it zigzag like this is just the the little difference between them you can also add more edges to this if i want to make it curve i just have to come and click here and then make it curve you can see it see that it's now curve i can literally drag this up make changes if i want to remove any point i can just come and press select the minus and then take out the point and then it's out or i can just literally click delete and delete any point yeah that's the sh what the shape tool does so let me delete this this is a max now so the next tool is actually the text tool the text tool um just literally adding text okay it also also has a drop down you can see um horizontal text uh, text to vertical text so if i want to type horizontal if i just type now let me just type something um you can see it's that's what the horizontal text if i say i want to type vertically let me see, take this out let me delete it let me change this to the vertical if i type now literally see the text is going from top to down okay m a n you can see it's going from top to down that's the vertical and also if i want to change this to, to horizontal let me type in a new one horizontal you can see that's the difference between the vertical and the horizontal text oh but all are still the same text you can just pick any one which you want so now the next two is a rotor brush the rotor brush is actually used to crop out image like um i'm going to be showing this now on an advanced tutorial not on this part and um, this clone stamp is actually like um making a duplicate of, a, of an object um sorry the clone stamp and in short course control b and this is also the erase tool to erase any stamp you made from the clone stamp okay um sorry this is actually the brush tool i'm so sorry this is actually a brush tool and this is the rotor brush tool i'm gonna be leaving this one for an advanced tutorial the rotor brush tool is actually used to crop out an object or image you want or you do not want yeah that's what it does uh and then this is the puppet tool it also has a drop down menu you can see their shortcuts you can just take your time to go through them just like I, i'm using after effect cc 2019 and this is the shortcuts for it so the puppet tool is actually used to um, control layers or um object like 2d animation mostly 2d animations or even um, 2d layers so that's literally what the puppet tool is actually used to do so now that's all for this tool at the top so now we're going to move down here to the um, next part which you see project and then said you see effects control you see project and then effect control project are literally the composition which you've created like um let's move on to this part now this part is usually um where your composition is actually said let me just wipe out all this stuff so, you see it. so literally i'm going to be explaining this part now that says project and effects now uh, the project is actually um like where you drop all your files and everything this is where you, they normally come in when you select your create a project composition and everything so normally when you open your after effect depending on the um version you're using so for me i'm using 2019 like i said you can either use the home button to start to create a new composition so it's literally like this you can actually click on a project you've worked on before or let me just say i'm starting on a new project i can just click on my new project and then um i don't want to, sorry i already opened something for that question so once i click on a new project it shows me this new project so it's going to ask if i want to create a new composition or new composition from no no i want to create a new composition i can literally do that by coming up to, to file new and then new project which is con in short for that is control alt plus new but i want to i don't want to do that i don't want to use this way this is one of the method and another method is this to new composition so is that i press control alt plus new or i just literally come here sorry come on to file new and then new project but i don't use i want to use a new composition so i'm gonna be using this so if i click new composition now now it's gonna be asking me um you see this first one you see presets i this should be set as custom just leave it like this and then the width of the uh, this is the width and height literally we all know videos are in the pixel the uh, resolution of the video you see that it's 1920 by 1080 or it's 1280 by 720 depending on the resolution of your video um you want to choose 
but if you don't know the resolution of the video that's not a problem i'm going to show you how to fix that so um and then on the next part is how many frames you want per second yeah it's literally set on to 50 frames per second or you can actually change this down to whatever you want depends on what you want by i uh, suggest you leave that normal and for the um, square pixels it's usually 16 by 19 film the frame rate um, aspect ratio it's usually 15 16 by 19 so if you have any suggestion you can actually change that but i'm going to leave that resolution you can literally change this at any time when you actually work in this doesn't matter just leave this here so the time code where it start leave always leave this at zero 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 unless you know you want to make any change and then the duration of the video the video let me see the video you want to edit if it's a short video you want you don't uh this way it changes this is the first one is hours the second one you see this 0 0.8 is minutes and then this other one is seconds and this is uh i think this should be big how millennium i don't know but that's what this one is set for uh so you just know the duration of the video. but if you don't know the duration of the video no problem i'm still going to show you how to fix that so the background color uh, this is if you want to choose any background color for your video and this is just literally a background color it doesn't, doesn't really matter so i'm just going to leave that as like that uh, if you want to also change the aspect of the ratio you can also just unlock here and manually change it from here but i don't want to change anything i'm just going to leave it like that and then click ok so now we have a 1920 by 1080 pixel ratio and on the duration of eight minutes so now let's say you want to bring in a video sorry about the noise let's say you want to bring in a video now so let's say you want to bring in a video um yeah either ways you can you can actually literally drag your video and drop it here or by shortcut to bring the video you can either use file and then import image uh, imports and then click on files multiple files any way you want i'm just going to use the shortcut i can just literally press ctrl i and then go over to where your folders your um stuff restored let me go over to uh, let me just bring in the video i'm going to bring in raw footage um let, literally let me just bring this in so let me get this up this is literally here let me get this in so literally we're having this here now if i uh, it says uh, you can see this is the video you can see the resolution it says 120 by 1080 pixel i can literally drag this here and then you can see this on the timeline it's just literally a short clip and then it's here and then yeah now i'm going to take this back now i'm going to get back to this but let me show you something now for the composition now you remember in the composition we did something and we were talking about the video resolution height and width this stuff here you see this is the stuff for this video that says um, 1920 by 1080 this is the same thing with the video so now for those of you like what i was saying for those of you who don't know you want to make a composition you don't know the duration of a video and any stuff um another way of doing that you can literally just come here and then delete this composition let me say just you can just import your video to after effect and then literally drag this from here so they hold this and then drag it down here and then literally the after effect uses the video duration and everything about the video to create a composition if the video uh, resolution is 1920 by 1080 it makes a composition of it which is here at the top which is 1920 by 1080 pixel and if the video is um 720 pixel it literally makes a video of that and the duration everything it just uses details from the video to make a composition and if you want if if the um timeline is not enough or you want to add more videos to increase this timeline because it literally ends where the video ends so all you have to do is come over um back to this part here at the top right corner here of the screen and then click on composition setting and then you can literally make adjustments to the time time codec change anything you want to change and then also background color video resolution and also um you, if that if you don't want to change it you can come over to composition and then um um from here composition setting you can see there also a shortcut for it Control k and then do what you want to do yeah so that's it so now let's move on to this next part here um you can see here it literally says um um uh magnify which will pop up this is literally a zoom to like if i want to zoom in i can literally just use it to zoom in you can see it's actually zooming out I'm going out from the screen it's going small small and then small to the smallest and then you can you can literally see nothing it's just there if i want to get back there i can just literally click up fit up to zoom and then it goes back to the exact screen size or if i want to you see if i should try here it depends on the video quality okay if the video is up to 4k it might zoom up to 6000 so let me see 
this you can see it literally zoom in 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 and in if i should press the hand tool now you can see i'm pressing the hand to hitch as a shortcut and i'm going to side to see just to see see um, what it's zooming to zoom into their faces you can see their skin somehow breaking but if i should zoom out a little bit you can see it's from their face and mind you you're not seeing this clearly right you're not seeing this clearly due maybe due to the camera position or whatever camera we use but now if you can see this now let me move on to this next part this next part here you can see it says quarter this is um just actually making the preview quality lower if i should take this now to third look the quality you can see the quality went up a little bit if i should take this now to half see the quality is getting better if i should take this up to full now you can see the quality is literally a little bit much better than before you can see quarter you see how the quality looks like and then full you can see the difference literally what this does is that if it's on quarter it lets the video preview play faster depending on the um graphics card the spec of your laptop or whatever quarter is just like a low resolution preview it's just for the preview okay it always under high quality or it depends on when you want to export it but this is just a preview version it tells you if you want to uh, preview it as quarter or full we know that if you, if you put it on quarter it easily previews faster than when it's on full okay so let me just zoom out so you can see everything fully you can see the resolution on full so if I should take this down back to quarter, you can see the quality has dropped down a little bit. I might not notice this because it's a little bit far from the screen. So yeah, that's what this does. So now this is actually um I'm just gonna go with transparency grid. This is actually when you're making the PNG for the view. Like if if there's no background, let me say if I should shut this down. Let me go back to my end too. If I shut down this video layer now, let me turn this off. You can see it's literally saying this is a PNG background. So this is what this does if I should turn it back on if you want to view any stuff if it's transparent or not if there's anything to the background you can literally just select the png mode and let it view it that way so let me turn back off this layer so now this is the active camera now we are going to get into this when we're into 3d and stuff like that this is literally when you're actually doing 3d stuff where you can actually see um different camera views and all that you can actually choose multiple views two views horizontal different sets of view yeah this is what this does and for now we're going to leave out this part when we get into advanced deep part it's not really that necessary but we'll get back into that when it's time so now let's slide down to this part here this is actually if you want to create a new this is if you want to create a new folder in here to um pack in some let me say i want to create a new folder you can notice let me do that again so you can notice this um let me do this so I want to create a new folder where I will be dropping all my clips that will be important. I just literally click this, create a new folder. And then here we go. We have one here. It's creating a folder. Uh, I can literally name this as anything I want. Let me say man. And literally drag a video I want. Just like creating a folder on a laptop. And then bam. It's inside there. So it makes your work look. Let me say this part is full with a bunch of clips. I can literally put it on this part. Just to organize your work to make everything much easier for you. Then if you want to create a new composition, you can literally click here, a new composition. As you literally click it, and then Chris, you can see a new composition. But I don't want to do that. So yeah, if okay, let me see this. You can let me just say comp two, and then click OK, and you can see it on the project side. It's going to form over from here. You can see it's comp two. You can literally start a new stuff in here. You can see it's create another person. Yeah. And if I want to easily do that, I can easily press delete on my keyboard, or I can just click delete from here, and then it's gone okay so now let's move on down to this other side so i can explain this part this part here is literally this is the video layer which we just dropped you can see the duration just like i said so this eye here this stuff is just like to make the layer visible or not visible or invisible and this next stuff here you can see it says this is the audio if i should play this thing now it might take some time to preview so sorry um Oh, they're not literally saying anything in this clip, but if I should turn off the audio from this now, you're not hearing anything. This is literally for the audio. This clip literally doesn't have any audio, so this is literally just to turn off the audio in that. And this is a solo layer. This second one here is a solo layer. If I want to make this layer somehow invisible when I'm making a rotoscope, but for now, we're not using this. Okay? So this is the um, attack. This is lock layer. If I, if I don't want to start, let me say I'm editing, I don't want anything to affect this layer, I need things to come in or out of this layer. I can only see, but I can't do anything. I just have to click this here, and then it's locked. You cannot, you cannot even click it. If you click it, 
you can see it's blinking i can't even i can't even shut uh okay i can shut this down but i can't literally do anything i can't really cut i can't move i can't it's literally locked until i open if i can make move you can see now nice that's when i can make move but if it is locked you can actually do it just like a locked house okay so now let's move on to this part this is um, actually the shy layer okay this is the shy layer if i make this thing like this and i click here um and i click sorry and i click here hide now you can literally the layer is actually there you can see the video you can see it on the previous screen but you cannot see it here that's what that stuff does okay if i should click this back it brings it back okay for the shy layer that's why literally if i so if i change this to this and then this is toggle as blue literally goes into hiding okay um this stuff is not really necessary for now so let's move on to this next one this is the motion blur layer like what this does is that it makes things blurry like let me show you an example if i should come here i click new and then create a text now if i should animate let me shut down this video layer so everything will be much faster preview let's say i create a text man and then i move over. i want to animate this thing to move from left to right i just press p on my keyboard select the position and then move the keyframe a little bit and then i can literally just drag this to where i want now if i should play this now this is what happens You can see it just moved here, just fantasy. Now notice this. But now if I turn on this motion blow now, just take a look at the text. I'm turning this motion blow. You can see now it's somehow you cannot even see clearly, like somehow blurry. If I should play this now, you see how, how it looks now. It looks blurry. It depends on the after effect version you're using. If you turn on this motion blow here, you need to turn this on too, okay? So it works, okay. Because if you turn this stuff off, you can see I turn it off and it's no longer working. You can see it. So make sure it's always on when on to turn on the motion blur. Yeah, so that's the work of the motion blur. And this here is actually the adjustment layer. If I want to convert a layer into an adjustment layer, I can literally select this, turn it on. Then you turn this on. It's just like a glass, a transparent glass, which you can see through. Drop things on top, effects on top to affect the video or whatever you're doing. Okay? So I'm not gonna use this as a um, adjustment layer. So, so then this next point now is to make a layer 3D. Let me show this position. If I want to make this layer a 3D, like, like literally, if I should click rotate now, you just literally see only one stuff here. If I should rotate this now, you see how it's rotating just left to right, like a clock clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. But if I should make this layer a 3D now, you can see literally the rotation menu has increased. We have the orientation, X rotation, Z rotation, Z rotation. So now if I should click this first one now, you can see it's usually turning from up to down like it's falling. This one here, the second one is literally moving from left to right like it's turning. And then this other one here is literally making it clockwise and then and it's a clockwise direction on our rotation. That's what it does. And then you can see the X rotation. It's literally just almost the same thing with the top one. So you just have to Take your time to go through this they all got their own functionalities so that's it for it it's for it it's just to make a layer as 3d okay so we'll be getting on to this part after after this period so we're just literally getting to know here now if we should go down here it says toggle switch toggle switch mode you can literally switch like from here now you can see this is a menu on this one if i should click this toggle switch it takes me to another menu that says normal if i should click this now this is the blending mode we have screen add if i should make this a screen now let me turn back this video layer so you can see so if i should let me put it back as normal this is text at normal you can see it's very bright you can see everything clearly let me make this as full resolution you can see you can see every part of the text shiny and everything but let me zoom zoom in a little bit i'm pressing z on my keyboard and i'm zooming in so you can see now if i literally turn this from this man if i change the blending mode from normal to screen you can see now it's somehow bright and somehow fade you can see stuff like let me take this stuff to our face now you can somehow see her through the stuff like you can see her eyes but if i should make this thing back to normal you can see you're not seeing anything again okay
so that's literally what the blending mode does the different mode but this is i think add is one of the most popular version of the blending mode so you just have to go through that and then um, pick any one that suits what you're doing just to change the blending mode and that's all for that yeah so now let's move on to the next part where we have this toggle switch here uh, that, okay that's literally what we've done so now let's move on to the next part inside the timeline the time you can see this what yeah this is the indicator that lets you drag in and moves um the indicator it lets you move in to know what uh part of the video you're at back front where you are let me take this down so you can easily be fast so i can literally click here and then just like normal every every other normal editing app software or app indicator literally lets you know where you are you can see this is that you see it's f f this is in frames now because we literally the video is not up to uh, how many minutes just almost how many frames just in seconds though these are in frames you can see these are in frames because when we're actually setting the composition on the video the video is literally not long it's just a 24 seconds video so it, as you, you can see it says f56 frame and then <coughs> everything is in frame so yeah you can, if you want to make this thing to change the second, you need to change the time codec to um, 000. Like, literally, if I should put this up to 000, so literally everything should be normal. Oh, still not normal. Okay, yeah. Now I got no normal. You can see it's 2 seconds, 4 seconds, and then it's back to 24 seconds because the video is not literally that long. So 24 seconds and 21 frames. That's just the duration of this video. So that's what this. Um, timeline does so if i want to let me say i don't want all this part of the video to play i can just literally drag this stuff to this part and then it stops here if i want to do this other part too so i'll take it here notice when i take it to this part the um sign change from this moving cursor it changes like an arrow and then i can drag it back to anywhere i want on the last shortcut to do that is by going on to the part where you want and then press on b on the keyboard which is in the beginning okay and if i want to end here I can literally come here and then press N as end. Okay, so now literally just plays here. Even when you want to export, you export just here because this is where the indicator is actually indicating. So just like this are the only active layers in the video. Okay, so now up to the next one. If I want to trim a video, if I want to trim this video from left to right, there are multiple ways of doing this. I can literally just select the video and then go over to the beginning and then trim it like this yeah and it's gone the same thing with it from this other side too and it's gone so that is literally for trimming but if i don't want to do that i can just literally press alt and then close bracket on my keyboard and then it cuts it from left to right if i want to cut from right to left i go again alt and then close bracket it cuts from um le right to left so that's it if i want to bring it back i can literally just select the layer and then go back to the part where I want. If I want it here to come fully, I just press Alt and then close bracket. It comes here. If I want to see extend, I can still come back here again. Alt and then close bracket. Yeah, so that's it. So if I want to do the same thing to this part, I can literally just come here and then Alt and then open bracket. Or I can just literally just drag it and then it fits. Mind you, this is the sign for dragging it out. Yeah. So that's just it for this um, the indicator panel. So now moving on to this part here is literally if you want to play this um video it's literally explains itself this is just a preview panel a short call to play it and then literally click here and then it plays the video and then it shows you a ramp preview shows you, shows you how many frames are in the video if you can see fps frame per second uh, i can literally just go and found the go frame by frame you can see it's going slowly 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 or i can just go up to the end of the clip and then you see that's the end of each clip yeah so now if you slide down you can literally open this i think they got some other men is in here but you don't literally have to touch this okay just leave this um this is a short course just to play the video if you want to play the video so i don't want to go in deep down let's leave that for now that's not what i'm concerned for now so now if you, if you come here now you can see library let me bring it out you can see library characters and then the last word in here is effects and presets let me start with the library. The library most people don't usually use this, okay? So let's leave on this library. Libraries are when you got some kind of effect stuff. So character has to do with the text, text animation, text 
um, stylish font colors and everything like if I should bring this text now this man text back now man so I like his man just a short quote <laughs> so if I bring this man here you literally seeing this color as yellow because the text preset says is yellow if I double click this now and then come here to this text and then change it to any color you can see it's literally changing any color I want let me keep it as blue and click OK voila it's blue if I don't like this color I can literally change it to any color I want I can just select here make sure you double click and make sure it's you overlay everything selected then you literally just come here and then select any color I need um, I need this yellow color voila you can see it's not yellow again I can still come back again choose any color I need this red color I can come here and select it it's red you can see it that's what the um, color does so that's it for it now you can see there's a black if you, if you look closely let me get this as full resolution let me turn off this video layer if you can look closely at the end oh sorry okay let me make this png as you can see if you can look closely at the edge of this text you can see this is a black solid just a black stroke around this thing this is because i added the stroke to this text so if i should double click on this this is the stroke layer this is one behind here if i should click on this i can literally change the stroke color to any color i like you can see it's red now I can literally change it to yellow it's yellow now sorry about the noise i'm actually close to the road so um you can actually change any color of the stroke you want green and, and ha, you got this so let me say the stroke color is too big you want to increase this or down you can just literally come here and then increase it. you can see it's going up or you can reduce it down 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 there are different functionalities here guys a lot of stuff you can do with this this is basically to animate the whole text text yeah, you can do stuff like shrink the text make it bigger you can see it but i'm going to be leaving that for now to move on you can just do a lot of stuff with this yeah there are a lot of stuff you can do with this but i'm not going to be going deep down into it you can take it from time to time you can try what this all this um stuff can do yeah or maybe when we get it down we can see what you do okay so now let me just leave this part um let's go on to the next phase so now this part where it says here yeah, down it says um i'm oh, sorry we're still here so now we're here now the the last one is effect and preset effect and preset this is literally where all your effects put your plugins shortcut this is a shortcut to access all your plugins and stuff this is literally where they all sit okay like this is the um home of all the effects and everything a shortcut just like um i said this is literally where i actually access all my effects and everything like if we if we in a hurry you can just literally come here and type and say let me just type the saber plugin and then you say all your plugins and reset it you can literally just drag it you select the layer which you want to apply the effect to you literally drag this to the text the effect the layer sorry or you can just select the layer double click on it and then it's there it looks black now though it looks black because uh this is just text layer you should have seen it let me create a solid so you can see what i'm talking about solid now i select the solid there i can literally just drag this in there and then you see this this is a plugin save our plugin i can literally select this to affect the text but i'm not going to be going deep down in there well let me just do it so you can see what the effect is all about and then customize score um sorry text and then i'm going to select that text man so you can see it there it's literally affecting the text yeah so you see it now that is it for that but we're not doing that for now so let's go back to our stuff so let's head on so now that's it if you want to add any effect you can just literally swipe in and just and then type in the text the um, plugin so now we're moving down to this part now it is tracker this tracker literally has to do with videos okay you see as i click on the video everything is on we have the track camera it literally used to track um like a moving shot this is what you use to track on the moving shots so you can place 3d objects on the um footage you're having you can literally place 3d shots um, 3d objects on the air i've used it in most of my videos like um um, Defense on my video up there different videos I've made so I use this a lot and wrap stabilizer if you have a shaky clip that clip is shaky too much I also use this in my video too 
uh, yeah, the clip is too shaky and you want to stabilize it so you can actually do some other stuff and make it just look smooth you can use this wrap stabilizer and it's also similar to this stabilized motion too yeah and this track motion is usually used to track uh, objects like let me say you want to put in the, the uh, superman heat vision on your eyes you want to track your eye movement as you're moving this is literally what it's used to track the motion so yeah this is that that's literally what it does yeah so now we're going to move on to the um the next phase we're still coming back here again now i'm going to be showing you something now there are shortcuts to each and every of this layer each and every of this layer you can actually see here like for this like for this now um if i should press if i should go on this layer now since this is a video layer it literally applies to all layer though if i should press arrow on this now it literally applies to this layer you can see it's rotating this was the same thing i told you in the beginning about the rotation it's a shortcut we have arrow for rotation we have T for opacity. These are the short cut keys. Opacity literally fades out the clip. Uh, the visibility of any object. You can try to put it at zero, you cannot see anything. And then back to 100. It's here. That's literally what opacity does. And then the next thing is um, um, we have T, arrow. And then we have S for scale. Scale, just if you want to scale it up, you want to bring it down up and down any how you want to make it look big or small that's literally the work of the scale to by pressing s on your keyboard okay yeah so that's what it does just literally to scale things up and down yeah so that's the shortcut this literally applies to every layer okay also applies to text video uh, apart from audio so if i should let me just do this to the text so you can see it too if i should arrow rotation t for opacity that's a shortcut key you can see it goes up and down mm -hmm. and then s for scale you can see it's going up and then down up down yeah so that's it for that and also it also if you want to toggle this as a 3d layer let's change this now you can make, literally make this as a 3d layer too you can see more options are coming out you can see i make the video now the video is rotating as a 3d sequence you can see it yeah that's literally what it does the same thing to text so every layer has this also the blending mode too for video to can also be changed just to screen add sorry add uh it's literally here you might not see the effect because this is just one video okay so that's literally what this does okay so that's for this part now um up next we'll be moving up on how to so that's for this part now so we're we'll moving on to the next phase on um, adding animating the text about keyframes and stuff now so on keyframes now keyframes are literally commands you know like i was saying i was going to show you that like keyframes are literally commands you use in um commanding the text like telling it to, it's just like commands okay now cloud let me say i want to animate this text now to move from here why they're talking from here to this part now so i can usually just take it here and then pose I, I press p on the keyboard sorry i really forget the last one is position p so i can just usually click position and then i, I need to move this indicator to a little bit and then animate this to where i want it to be let me say i just want it to be somewhere around here you can see it creating a line so if i should take this back now if i play the video now this is what happens let me say the quality has some um, low quality so it can be very fast so if this should play now you can see it literally moving to the part where i animated it to you see it moves now to the moment it gets to where the uh, keyframe stops yeah that's where it stopped remember to make this work you always need to turn on your stopwatch once you make it turn on any command you make it is created it's embedded so yeah if i want to make it up take it up again i can just select it and then take it to where i want if, if it's too stressful for you to move it in this on the screen you can literally come here to make the adjustment left right left right up down up down yeah this is literally for the position you can also do the same thing on opacity by pressing T 
if i want to make this stuff fade out now i can just literally keyframe this select make sure the stopwatch is on now it's at 100 percent and then i move it here and i can then reduce this down to zero so if this stuff goes now you can see it fades out it's no longer there now because i animated the opacity of the text now i can literally take it forward and then bring it out again and then here you go you go you got this stuff now it's now back as 100 percent full um visibility now so now let's say as soon as it gets here i want to make it big i want to scale it from small to big i can literally just press s on my keyboard and then i can just turn on the stopwatch and then if i take it forward a little bit you can just scale it up boom then it's big so if i should play this now it's another command wow you see it's girls going up now if i should take this back to the beginning and then you see it moves all the keyframes we'll be making up and then pass the fade and it comes back and then goes big wow now you might be wondering like how do i how do i get to know like where are all my keyframes nothing nothing is actually showing nothing is showing like i need to see so i can know where i can animate one yeah no so if you want to see all your keyframes any keyframe you make on a layer just press select the layer and then press u on your keyboard and then all the keyframes you've made will come out you see for position position has its own line literally click anyone it turns blue you can see all the uh, keyframe make on position if you click scale you can see all the uh, stuff you made on scale if you click opacity you can see all the uh animations you made on opacity so yeah that's literally it you can usually just drag them to suit any part where you want it so you can easily change the position you can manually move any one of these ones or you can actually select and just select and then drag it as you like yeah so now that's for it so if i if let me say i, I mistakenly close down this stuff let me say you want to multiply you also just want about two let me say you just want the scale and opacity to show you can just press s on your keyboard and then let me say the next stuff you want to show is your opacity just press shift and t on your keyboard you can literally see the opacity layer coming out if i want the rotation layer to show i just press shift and arrow on my keyboard and rotation layer is coming out if i want the position layer to show i'll press shift and p on my keyboard that's just it if i want the anchor point to show i think i should press shift and a and you can see literally everything is coming out if i literally want them to come out one after the other but if i but um that's if you're not on keyframe okay if i just literally want them to come out one after the other but if they are if you actually keyframe all of them and then you want them to show at once don't just press u on the keyboard and all the ones with keyframe only the ones with keyframes are coming out okay but if you don't if you want the others to come out just literally press is it shift a shift p shift any of them so now now that's it for the let's go back to the rotation now you can see on the rotation now it's just literally one layer showing okay so now i'm going to click on this toggle switch let's work on the 3d now if i should click this 3d layer now it's now you see the rotation menu is now broad now if i should turn this now you see it's rotating now let me take this back now you can see it's no longer straight like before because i rotated this but you notice as it's moving just like that it does not change just like that way it is because i don't animate it. i just rotated it and then i get i just drop one command for it and then it's just like that but let's say as it's like this now i click on the stopwatch and then i literally move it forward and then i change the rotation it's like this now notice you notice it's actually turning it's literally turning from just making um, turns as it's moving that's what the command does okay you make it turn you see it so that's literally what the command is actually doing it's actually helps to change now because it's a 3d on the 3d axis that's why i selected the 3d box that's why it's making changes it's also the same with these other ones you can literally change it so but make sure if you want to give it a, a command you always need to turn on the stopwatch and then take it forward and make uh another um rotation you can see it so that's it so literally that's what the keyframe the stopwatch does anyway you see this you can actually make animation so this is also the same for the opacity rotation the scale and everything okay guys so that's it for just the beginners class in the interface after this we're going to be getting on to advanced classes so that's it for today on part one so let's get on to the next phase on chapter two
Cheers to the shooting side.